Oh wait, where's that little ladder? Can we use um, that? Yes. For this? I already got it down. Okay. Yay! I'll have to edit this Thanks. one. <laughs> okay. Sarah, how can we like tag your mansion? Tag your mansion. Yeah. yeah. Do you want? Do you like this song? Okay, so we're going to get started in a few minutes, you guys. Sorry, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being here. <laughs> oh my We're gosh, going to also, so oh, this is hard to like <laughs> do all at once. So that won't make a difference. Okay, great. Okay, so we are going to start with our cocktail of the evening. And because I love goddess cards and because we are all goddesses. And, and I'm new to them. And so she's I'm totally new. She has no idea what this woo-woo crap is. And <laughs> I'm going to show you. So basically the way goddess cards work, and we're just going to feel into what this cocktail wants to be named. I'm kind of mocking this, but it's for real. You can use it at... Um, I use it a lot in my coaching session, sessions with clients. I use it to plan programs. I use it to choose themes. I use it on a daily basis for myself in my morning ritual to n d download some divine guidance around what I need to know that day or what my theme of the day needs to be, what I need to be focusing on. Um, so I'm going to just pull one and see what this cocktail wants to be named today because we're going to start with that, and Tara's going to lead us through crafting this beautiful, healthy, version of a cocktail super clean and awesome and she's going to tell you about why it's important to her that food be clean and I'm going to tell you about why it's important to me and we're going to have a grand old time and we're going to chat wellness, we're going to chat lifestyle, we're going to chat healthy living in general, we're going to chat goddess lifestyle, it's going to be awesome. So um, Tara, do you have anything to say while I do this? I'll just like... Yeah. Well, okay, so walk us through this year. Okay, so, so you, it's a... It's a goddess card deck. Correct? Yes, it's Dream Virtue Goddess Card Guidance Oracle Cards. I love them. I like live. I take them everywhere I go, pretty much. So um, obviously, I'm in the kitchen in her apartment, and then, you know, there's no other reason for them to be here other than that I love them. So um, this is basically just a way to. It's it's energy, right? Like everything is energy. This table is made of energy. You and I are made of energy. Um, our food is made of energy, so this is such a cool tie-in actually to what we're doing today. And it's just feeling into the energy that um, feels aligned with us. So when I ask a question, that holds energy. When I say any word, that holds energy. So um, when I ask a question of the goddess card deck, it attracts like energy. So if I say, um, what is the name, what does this cocktail want to be named tonight? It's kind of a funny way to uh, ask, like a funny question to ask, but we're gonna ask it anyway just to have some fun. So if I ask what this cocktail wants to be named and I feel into this deck, and I just pull a card, it says Pele, which is like the best one ever. <laughs> Why? So oh it God. means divine passion. Pele is a Hawaiian oh goddess of divine passion, um, and her message is be honest with yourself. What's your heart's true desire? So I wonder how that will inform what we talk about tonight in this uh, Google Hangout and in this, um, you know, Periscope cast, we're doing both at the same time, just so you know. Um, passion fruit. No, not passion. Maybe that would be good. We don't have that. We wish. But not. that would be such a good cocktail. We'll have to like create that on the fly and just say, if you add passion fruit, this is really true to Pele. <laughs> so that would be our goddess for the night. Um, so she's just divine passion. I'll read. Oh, okay. She stands for divine passion. She's, um, let me pull up her other meaning. So she also is, her, here's her message. If you listen to the sound of your heart and breath, you'll recognize the ancient rhythms of your own internal drumming. This forever connects you to the mother of all creation and to the sound of planet Earth. These rhythms can't be faked or forged. They're natural and eternal. What part of you are you trying to ignore? What part of you has been overly concerned with pleasing others to the detriment of hearing the sounds of your own rhythm. 
Dear child, reach out and extend your arms and embrace your dreams. They're just as much a part of nature as are the trees, animals, and sunsets. Don't your own dreams deserve the same respect that you accord everyone and everything that you love? Listen to them. Listen to your dreams. They'll activate the powerful eruption of passion in your life. Don't be afraid of your own passion, for it will propel you naturally and will excite and invigorate you. When you dance to the rhythms of your life, you're truly alive in all ways. What a good, tough, what a good way to start like a healthy cooking class, really. Because um, what's important to me, and I'll speak to like my philosophy about yeah. this, and I want you to share yours, is like the food we eat is the core of our aliveness, right? Mm -hmm. And our soul's mission is our greatest aliveness. And I just love that idea of when we aren't fully alive, we, um, you know, we're not living our best life, right? That's the whole point is that we're here to be fully alive. And if we're not doing that, then there's something we're ignoring or not paying attention to that we could pay attention to and really um, take advantage of that information to live our best life, right? So yeah. the way I see healthy eating and healthy living is like our body is the vessel for our soul. And I've heard it called like the God Pod, and I really love that idea, and it really super resonates with me. So, um, if our body isn't clean and we don't take care of it, then we're not fully able to access the deeper wisdom of our soul through our human body, which is like a really cool concept. I just love that. Um, so, does anyone like super resonate with that? Let's get some like hearts going on um, if we can. Who's on our Google? Man, someone came. Katie. Hey, Katie. Hey. Are you going to be cooking with us tonight, babe? Hi. Hi. That is my sister and my niece. Oh, so cute. Awesome. <laughs> so, if any of you guys on Periscope want to hop on the um, live Google account, you can do that right now and um, we'll be able to like interact with you and be able to see you and feel you even more powerfully. So hop on there if you can. I thought that looked like you and I was like, yes, <laughs> why is she? Yeah, yeah. The, but she's here. Yes. <laughs> to connect with what you were saying yeah. earlier, it's really exciting because our food also has energy tied to it. Yes. So that's really when we pick the food for certain days of the day and just kind of vibes with that same train of thought where energy runs through everything and it's so true. Mm -hmm. You can really kind of, um, if you focus a lot on what you're eating, then you actually can feel the energy of the food, which yes. is a big thing about meat mm -hmm. and meat consumption, why it's so important to get really quality meat. Mm -hmm. But, um, so let's, I love that. let's get into this goddess cocktail. Yes, Pele. our Pele cocktail. And I love too that it's sparkly because it's like a, an explosion. She's like a volcano goddess of passion. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I don't eat meat. Good for you. Ooh. I don't know. Like meat is interesting, right? Because it's like not bad or good. It right. just is. And it depends on what your body needs and the energy exactly. that you makes. What, what makes you feel most alive? And I feel like that's how I try to base all of my decisions when I'm choosing food or choosing like recipes or whatever is like what would make me feel most alive what would make my body feel most vibrant and that's really like my philosophy right and when I'm like ordering off a menu or whatever mm -hmm. you know it's like what makes what would make me feel most alive right now with my body want. yeah so, I was a vegetarian for two years yeah and then I just I came back to realize that meat is kind of an important part of my journey, but mm -hmm. it was also when I came, you know, to the realization that it's not just meat, it's the quality of meat. Yeah. So now I just really try to pay attention. And everybody that's tuned in from Pittsburgh is <laughs> awesome because we can really, um, there's such a nice focus on farm to table and local sustainability here. And it's really, really easy to find out where your meat is coming from, especially. There are some really cool markets like the Co-op or Marty's Market, and you can really go down there, and you can find you can actually talk to people that have been is that? at the farms. I don't know who that who that was. It was like DSW. It might be Brad. Brad, is that you? Yeah. Saying grass-fed all the way. <laughs> so this is funny. I was actually 
uh, my program that's starting October 26. It's mm -hmm. called Homegrown, but I was going to name it Grass Fed. <laughs> <laughs> so but it's a lot of so good. It just didn't end up working out. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Um, we're going to make kind of like a spritzer. Yeah, <laughs> um, I love it. So we're going to add, we're going to take our little cups here. And what I just did in the meantime was cut some of these. I cut some lemon slices. They're going to be used at the end for garnish, and then um, the lemon is just going to infuse into the drink slowly, mm -hmm. and it's going to be such a like refreshing citrus feel. I mean, look how pretty these are. Yeah. I love it. You <laughs> cut them so well. Do you have any secrets for like how to cut good lemons for garnish? Because I feel like I can never I'm get it right. <laughs> trying very hardly to work on my cutting techniques. Yeah, because I just. So I was listening to a podcast with Andrew Zimmern recently, and uh -huh. he was like, just buy a bunch of potatoes and work on cutting. <laughs> so you have to cut, Practice. obviously, yeah, yeah. so your, your fingers don't get in the Protect way. Protect your little fingers. Okay, so we're going to take... Yeah, knuckles yeah. in the front. <laughs> so we're going to take our cup and just... Let's pour a few ounces, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Heavy pour on <laughs> wine, you know. wine, yeah. So we're going to... If it makes you feel alive, that is, people. It's the only thing. <laughs> I like to. I mean, we're celebrating here. Yeah, the goddess is pushing this is me. Celebration. <laughs> this is a goddess. This is a celebration of our divine passion. How yeah. appropriate too, because we're both so passionate about this topic. I know, these, like perfect. things that come together and merge so beautifully, and we have such similar philosophies. It's so yeah, cool. it's great. Our For sisterhood. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get into that. More. It's kind of what I think we're like, kind of drawn in a way. Yeah. But, so we're just taking a little bit of sparkling water right now, and we're just kind of topping off our wine with it. So, um, and then we're going to take our little lemon garnishes. Yeah, we can throw some ice in there. Yeah, sure, you can pop, pop a couple in there. This is kind of frozen, so. And then I, you can either stick these right on the side, and it's pretty, or I like to stick mine right in there. And look how cute that is, too. I love it. It looks, it like fits, like, for you guys who can't see. Hold on. It like fits uh, perfectly know. on top of the little like cup. See? How oh, nice. Taylor's just a big fan of the string. <laughs> Said no one. Said no one. <laughs> and okay, we're big no, fans of nice. T Swift because we're listening to the record. And it's so fun. Okay. And um yeah, and I think this, like, sisterhood concept, right, which is what I'm super passionate about, and I really try to live by that and, and do it in my business with my women who I coach and bring together in sister circles, um, is, like, like energy attracts like energy, right? Like we were just talking about. Um, did we check? I don't even know if we said that, but, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying now. Like energy attracts like energy, yeah. right? So what makes you feel alive when, when you're fully alive, your energy is at a high vibration, right? And that's the the energy of food too. So if you're consuming high vibrational fresh food that's really alive, then you're gonna feel more alive. Makes sense? And so if same thing in our lives, right? Like when we feel really awesome, high vibrational aliveness, then we attract other people into our lives who are also at that level of high vibrational aliveness of really, you know, positive, happy vibrant people and that's I don't know about you guys but that's really who I want to fill my life with I don't want to be around people who are negative and and stressed out all the time and it's not happy kind of to be like, here yeah it's um, just kind of like suck the energy right you know the high vibes that you have they kind of there are people that tend to take away from mm -hmm. that and you know right it's like leeching energy and, and the same goes with food right yeah absolutely um and that has a big thing to do with digestion and we kind of we tend to overwork our digestive systems mm -hmm. because we just there is a way that you can eat food that makes it far easier for your digestive tract to tackle it and so today the recipe that we chose is actually going to really help with digestion because it's really really plant-based um it is just that for now cool so yeah we Decided on going with some zucchini noodles, and it's really, really easy to make them. And it's a lot easier if you have an instrument called a spiralizer, or it's there's another you can get a peeler, a specific peeler <laughs> so that sure. looks like this. Oh my god, we have triple action here! I'll show. Okay, so this one with all these little ridges, 
and then yeah <laughs> and here on the little ridges. Um, so you can, I'm gonna give Emily this one to use, and that's gonna be our like bread and butter. That's gonna make you Wait, think that. Try your drink. Oh my Cheers. gosh. Cheers to vibrance. Yeah, and a lot of Pele. I am not mad about that. No, that's delicious and awesome. Yeah. So refreshing. Yeah, so what she's gonna do, we already. <laughs> yeah, so we cleaned all of our vegetables. And another cool thing about specifically these zucchinis and a lot of the other produce that we have right now, it's all local here to Pittsburgh. So the farms are probably within 50 miles from where we are right now. So we cut down on, you know, uh, our carbon footprint. We weren't, you know, buying vegetables from Mexico and we got as much as we could from Pennsylvania and we're supporting local and that's so important. Um, and it's more on live. <laughs> it, well, it goes really? along with the energy thing. It's like when these people on farms are putting, literally, it's their right, their heart and soul, and they're putting it into this farming, and you know when you eat it. I mean, you might not know, but I don't know how many of you have seen a zucchini. Feel the love. These are some big, hearty zucchinis, and the store-bought conventional ones are kind of just like, they're all on size, and they're yeah. all cookie-cutter, and... We don't necessarily, you know, we want the we want the unique ones. Yes, much like all of us can relate to. <laughs> so yeah, what she's gonna do? She's gonna take this spiralizing peeler and she's just gonna start peeling. You can peel it. Can I do it this way? Yeah. Or is it? Okay. I just go so straight. I have to like. Oh, it's working. Yeah, it didn't them. look like it was gonna work, and then it did. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So she's doing kind of like the skin right now, and as you can see, is it, it okay? literally. Do you do the skin, or do you? Yeah, I do the skin. Is Another fun fact is that the skin on all your vegetables and your fruit actually is packed with the most nutrients and collagen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we tend to peel everything and kind of off the bat we're losing some nutrients, but I keep all the skins on as much as I can with the exception of lemons. Mm -hmm. But you can use lemon zest for so much stuff mm -hmm. and lemon True. peels. Girl. Is it working? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna dance. Now, this, <laughs> this song we're listening to shake it off. Um, okay, so here's another option because not everybody has these tools, um, so, but I think everybody has a peeler. So this is literally just like a, a plain old, you know. We need to get one of these. I don't know. Like, Are they called peelers? Scanners? Yeah. Peeler. <laughs> yeah. peeler. Yeah. So these will make kind of like a, a thicker noodle, kind of like those egg noodles that you get out. Yeah. I'll do, a, I'll do this yellow one because it's, we're going to get some beautiful colors. This is beautiful. Like, for those of you who can't see, like, how awesome this looks right now, I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the so same, same with this one. And it's super gonna... easy, by the way. Like, this is obviously super easy to do. And, and to be honest, like, I've always wanted to make – zucchini noodles and I felt like it was going to be really tough like to do because I was like oh I don't have a spiralizer I don't yeah. have this and it I seems tried easy. using other instruments uh mandolin before and I just like I just like this is not even working I got it kind of dangerous I got my finger on oh, a mandolin no. man yeah I was <laughs> so my old roommate and I we were you know I was slicing stuff and I I thought my finger was off oh I was gosh. like you need to call your mom like, I don't have a finger anymore I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm so scared. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, Emily's noodles are. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, they're they're your typical noodles, kind of what you think of like a spaghetti noodle or something like that. And the ones that I made with just a normal um, peeler, they make these kind of like flat, flimsy. They're kind of like egg noodles. That's what they remind me of. <laughs> Also, I mean, I was at the grocery store, and I'm like, I can get, you know, mm -hmm. three normal zucchinis, but wait till you see the colors that end up in this beautiful dish. Oh, yeah, I'm excited about that, just seeing the, like, beautiful, vibrant yellow and the green. Yeah. Um, you know what? This is really interesting, because I just got off a call with a client, actually, and I was telling her, and I was telling the massage therapist, who's also a client and a friend of mine today, um during my massage, because I like to be talkative during that time, apparently. Um, but I was telling her how I really come to this new realization that our purpose here, because I focus a lot as a women's leadership coach with purpose and 
why we're really here and creating an impact and really changing the world and living in alignment in our day to day with our mission and sharing that and sharing that with the world and being able to do that through first knowing what that looks and feels like in our own life. And so one of my recent realizations and breakthroughs around this is that the only um, purpose that we really have here as humans have our souls having a human experience here on this planet is to um, like, it's funny that I'm healing right now. This is what reminded me of it is like to unveil and unpeel the layers of things that are keeping us distant from our souls and our truth and the truth lives in our souls and, and what we really desire and what we love and anything that keeps us separate from, we'll call it like divinity. So like um, whatever you believe is source of, of your life, whether it's God, universe, something else, yeah. goddess, whatever. Um, but it's just interesting because I'm like sitting here, peel I'm standing here like peeling away. And I'm like, oh, what a good <laughs> metaphor for like our lives, really just to like peel away the things that keep us distant from our soul. And it's such good like medicine to hear that, like, um, and to know that. And when we live from that place, it's like everything is just in flow and easy and effortless. And we know and we have this certainty and this power within us that, you know, we don't have when we live just from our heads and just from our human minds yeah. that try to keep us small and stuck and in fear and you know, all that jazz. So it's, it's so interesting though. How <laughs> it is. It's a great metaphor, but I also, I always tell Emily that um, our paths for me always seem to overlap because mm -hmm. I'll get, I get to a point, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm speaking to someone, when I'm, you know, make, creating content and I, and I start thinking, this is such a, I'm, this is a great vibe. I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, this is great. I feel comfortable. And then I get to a, a part, um, in the process and I'm, I, there's something that Emily has posted or wrote about or <laughs> spoke about. And I'm like, awesome. just, that goes so well with what I'm saying, uh, -huh. uh what I'm thinking, but it is really cool because it's, everything is so connectable and everything relates. Yeah. And, and yeah, our lives, really like our lives and our health and all of this is so interconnected. And yeah. that's really where my frustration was when I was studying like psychology and when I was looking at doing nutrition and, and all these different things was really like, but there's more than that. And I feel like you've felt the same way as like a coach, right? Like as a health coach, you're like, no, it's more than just nutrition. It's more than just this one aspect right. of looking like this one lens to look mm -hmm. in, in our lives and it's so much bigger than that. It's so much more than that. There's so many other parts that are all interconnected and intertwined in this holistic view yeah. of ourselves and the world and our bodies and everything. Sure. And so I appreciate that about you and your method and your program too. Yeah. It's, it's really um, beautiful. It's a very good mix of, I mean, when you, when you start to respect your body more and, and the things that you're putting into it and then you, you start with, you know, thinking differently, and that's the major, that's the thing that's going to do it for you, I mm -hmm. think. Um, right. I think you need to have that moment where you're like, ah, okay, I get it. I'm starting to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's so important, and it's it's that it's that moment that you always, people know, you know, mm -hmm. you know when, when you're like, oh, wow, I never even thought of it that way before. Uh -huh. But I have one of those probably every day now. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was blocked out myself for a while. Yeah. Okay, so we are. I guess we don't need this yet. Cherry gold. Yeah. You guys, we're gonna use my oh favorite my butter. Check it out. So yeah, Cherry that's gold. awesome. It might be it's... backwards in this yeah. camera, but that's okay. <laughs> you always want to get yeah. unsalted butter. Um, and Cherry gold actually comes. I mean, it's a pretty highly, you know sought after brand it's kind of like a big brand but they do claim that their cows i've never been to the irish farm that these cows <laughs> on, but they claim that they're from grass-fed cows in there we'll trust you know, them mostly in grocery stores so it's your best option when you're at one of these big grocery stores and if you can find it stock up on it i love it okay so, so delicious let's see Where you go to <laughs> <Most stressful. laughs> yeah. but yeah so, so we can start yeah we can start 
we pretty much just need the red one, I think. Okay. And the tomatoes you can bring. Okay. So I said in my message today that you could either get one large tomato or you can get some little cherry tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, whatever tomatoes, you know, spoke to you at the store. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, these ones, I mean, it's weird, but these I ones those. did. <laughs> there were orange ones, too, that was a pretty big contender, but... Yeah. So these guys, look how pretty yeah, they are. are. Look how cute, like, look, these are called, I think they're called pear tomatoes, but look how cute they are. They're like little pears. How sweet. See? I'm trying to show all of you in my friend are three different cameras. <laughs> I just love when my food has such beautiful calories yes. involved in it. Me too. I think it's so important um, to have beautiful food and to create, like, a beautiful experience around cooking and around your meals and I feel like community is such a big part of that for me mm -hmm. is like when I'm eating by myself or cooking by myself there's something there's something beautiful about that but there's also this added layer of like joy when I'm with someone or like when I'm eating with someone and having dinner with someone or like cooking with someone it's so beautiful and I just love that yeah yeah it's a perfect time to just kind of relax from the day I mean yeah. that's another huge the yeah. art of homegrown is getting people to cook more, you know, at home or with their families or kind of spreading that message of what we're eating and how it's so important and then kind of relating that to your whole family. It's kind of like a domino effect then because once you start eating better, yeah. the people that you surround yourself with are going to because they're <laughs> <laughs> eating food. Yeah. So, so Sorry about it. it. I have two things to say about that, but I don't want to. Too, no, we have to think about this. Um, so, it's such a good point of like our effect on other people, right? Like my thing is that we're we're all leaders, whether we want to be or not, because we have an influence around the people around us. And so, if we can really start taking responsibility and ownership for that influence and do something amazing with it, and really like be intentional about the impact we're having, we create this beautiful domino effect and this blossoming of everybody around us who comes into contact with us. And my view is if we are brightening someone's day and we are feeling most alive and in turn we're influencing someone else to feel happier, better, or more alive themselves or just more connected, then we are doing our job here. And that's really it. Like our yeah. purpose is to do that and to really uncover those layers that surround our souls like an onion. I <laughs> like that you said that. I um, I just listened to a another an interview between Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyer. Oh, and brilliant. Wayne Dyer um, said something at the end of it that really kind of hit me, and it was, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody gets stuck. Mm -hmm. You and I get stuck. Everybody yeah. gets stuck. And um, Wayne Dyer said something to the effect of, you know, if you're confused about what to do, if you don't know what to do, uh, and they, someone asked him what the purpose in life was, mm -hmm. and he s just falls back on serving others. Like, mm -hmm. how can you serve yeah. others? And if you're serving mm -hmm. others, then your life is full. It's mm -hmm. fulfilled, and you're, like, right. doing the right things. And I, I just I got kind of, like, chills. That's true. I feel like some people can misinterpret that, though. Sure, yeah. Because I feel like the real meaning is, like, serve yourself first and serve others as an extension of your service to yourself, your devotion to yourself, your, you know what I mean by that? Like, you have to take care of yourself or else you're no good to anybody else, Absolutely. right? Like, you can't have an impact. Your impact is weak if you are feeling weak and if you aren't really taken care of first. So it's yeah. like that life mask, that um, oxygen mask thing in the plane, right? Like, put yours on first so you can actually help other people. That's the same thing in our lives, in our health, everything. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I had something to go off that. Not really good. <laughs> but yeah, let's, yeah, so we're going to take our, our cherry tomatoes here, and we're just going to slice them in half. Okay. Um, if you have a whole tomato, just chop it up, dice it. Um, it doesn't have to be super fine. This is the thing about food, and I mean, we have a recipe pulled up, and it's, it is the one that I posted, so hopefully some of you, they're going to be a little mushy. <laughs> but, uh, do we have like, it's yeah, that's perfect. But you don't have to be so, you know, technical. You want to allow yourself to kind of be creative with food and, you know, don't worry so much if it's, 
if you want to cut it in half or keep it whole, that's up to you. <laughs> so don't, once people get, start getting into food, it starts to get kind of consuming and there's a big focus on, um, you know, doing things, everything by the book or what the recipe says, mm -hmm. but just be comfortable with yourself. And if you want to add a different spice, add it. Give it a try. If you like it, awesome. But if you don't, then you will know not to add it next time. Such a good philosophy. I was just talking to the same client I mentioned before about how there's no right or wrong decision. Everything just is. Like, yeah, there's the only reason it's right or wrong is because we place judgment on it. The only reason we place judgment mm -hmm. on it is because we... <laughs> it's because there's something that we're judging in ourselves that we then project out to other people through our judgments of them or of, of the food or whatever. It's not really about the external stuff. It's just a mirror into our internal world and what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So we can start to have that awareness of like, oh, maybe I really, what I would really love is this instead. There's no wrong. Like if I cut them in half, lengthwise, right? Like maybe I decide next time I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to try something new and experiment and it's not wrong. It's just different. And it just is like, and if we apply that concept to our whole lives, things really are different and shift and our whole philosophy changes and the way we experience the world totally shifts. And that's beautiful to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Emily and I met a couple, not a couple, maybe years years ago. Oh. No, oh, I, I went, went to we went to first of that one time. Oh yeah, yeah. And when I left there, I had, and I actually, this was my. We just met to talk, yeah. and of course it was some. You know, I had like a profound moment, <laughs> but we were talking about fear and, um, kind of like, I think I said something like, you know, what is the worst thing that could oh, happen yeah. if, if you fail? fail? If yeah. you fail, and you were like. You know, what is failure? Who made it up? And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> but that, it goes so much deeper. It's the same with stress. It's the same yep. with anxiety. It's, these are all terms that we kind of, we just label an emotion and it's almost like we give it a negative connotation and it doesn't need that. It just is, right? Yeah. Like our feelings and our emotions, especially the way we're feeling in our bodies, right? Like when we're health-wise, right, like the way we feel in our bodies, or it's just such good intel to what's actually going on under the surface that we don't consciously know about yet, mm -hmm. that we can then, it's just creating, emotions are like just creating awareness so that we are willing to look a little deeper than what we see on the surface, right? So it gives us really great intel and um, such great insight into what's really going on so we can really address the issues under the surface. Mm -hmm really do the internal work or do the health work that right. we need to do for ourselves, whether that's like coaching internal stuff or like um, changing a lifestyle habit or, or, you know, cooking more or whatever, you, whatever feels best to you and would make that shift for you happen. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just such a beautiful moment. Yeah. I was like, no, I do make it up though. Yeah, we <laughs> all do. We all do. It's like this cosmic joke, right? That that's a real thing. That stress is real. That like, um, any of the things that we label good or bad or real, especially failure. And I think that's the one that really stops a lot of people from taking action on whatever it is that they want to do in life or that they, that they put themselves out there for, they're willing to take a risk for, it stops them. And it just, it no longer makes sense to me at all because I can, I can understand that now. I can relate to it, but now the way I think about it is just so like, that's not even a real concept. We just made that up to like, yeah. What, what is that? That's not real. Like failure is not real. If you are doing something aligned with your soul and you feel it's in service and it is in service of serving other people and helping the world be better than you left it when you got or better than it was when you got here, that's great. That's good enough. That's perfect. Everything is perfect in that, in that lensing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about like, do I make this much money? Do I make that much money? Do I have this business? Do I have this many clients? Da, 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 da. Anything that we think defines our worth or our success is really just something that we allowed to define our worth and our success. And we can change that because we have the power to do it. We have the power to say, oh, well, I'm not going to define myself that way anymore. I'm not going to look at it that way. I'm going to look at it this way and choose a belief that's actually empowering, that's in service to my 
mission and sharing that with the world. Yeah, I think that's another big realization too is when, I mean, you read it and you hear it so many times, mm -hmm. but I just minced the garlic, by the way. So <laughs> take one of your cloves of garlic. I might use two because I do like garlic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're garlic fans, but just <laughs> minced it. But um, I also think that people kind of put too much pressure on themselves mm -hmm. when it's better, when you, as I, like I said earlier, when you serve, when your purpose is to serve or, you know, to leave something better than you found it, it's kind of, then you think that you have to spearhead yeah. a, an organization or, you know, do these big things. Yeah. But if you walk down the street and help someone pick something up off the ground, yeah. if you pick up a piece of garbage mm -hmm. from the ground, I mean, <laughs> it's these little simple things that yeah. it's just, it's kind of like change. You're changing the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah. You have to start having this this moment when you realize that everything that you're doing is, you know, you don't have, it doesn't have to be the big production the thing yeah. in the world. Right. Yeah. And the little things add up, right? Like, if we're responsible for the energy we put out there and it has an influence over other people, then our job is to really create more vibrant aliveness and positive energy to put out. Right? So that's our work inside. Um, and that comes from just peeling away those layers, like I was saying, to get more in touch with our soul and really live from that place of soul guidance instead of, you know, that place of the brain and the mind that we value so much in our society that keeps us actually really stuck. And it's not always in the highest service. It gets us to a certain point, but then it's not helpful anymore. Mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't serve us. Right. So we can choose either one. Yeah. I mean, we could choose to be pissed right now. <laughs> or, um, I, I mean, know. we could choose to be annoyed that, I know. you know, <laughs> for whatever reason. But and you wake up in the morning, it's the same thing. Yeah. You wake up and it's a decision. You might be tired, but you woke up. Yeah. <laughs> Good for cool. you. We're proud. Just yeah. know that. Think of us. Think of our smiling faces and know that we're proud of you for waking up. <laughs> so here's a little, so this is probably, I forgot to mention this earlier, but this is what you're left with after you peel. And the same thing with the other one. We peel them down so you can start seeing, you can, you know, you can start seeing the seeds on the inside. And don't, you don't have to throw these away. <laughs> um, you don't want to throw these away because this is still a perfectly, you know, usable zucchini, uh, throw it in the fridge and put it in a stir fry or mm -hmm. use it in like a mess, you know, a kitchen in a, a breakfast mess mm -hmm. or something. So yeah, just, uh, that's what I do. I just chop them up and mm -hmm. use the inside of them. Genius. I love that. So, okay. Emily's going to, she's going to slice this, this pepper up. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. How do you, how are you going to do it? Do you want to dice them? Do you want to, do you have a thin? good way to cut this pepper? Cause I feel like did you, like, do you guys have any good ideas for how to cut this thing? Yeah. Because I feel like there's those seeds inside, and, like, there's always a... And it's kind of an ordeal. Shaped one. This is... I feel like if you do this, you can kind of just pop it off. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's if a you just different. don't, like... Oh, you know? Oh, it worked! <laughs> <laughs> so I just, like, cut around the top, and then just popped it off, but not, like, all it's the like way through the seeds. That's a little touch. <laughs> This is another like fun fact about when you start, you know, making your own food. But it's fun. <laughs> this pepper is so totally usable. Even though it's just the top, all you have to do is peel it from the core, and then you have like all this part. It's not really good. <laughs> so, so much utilize your whole there. entire piece of food. Mm -hmm. I love that philosophy. It's so necessary, and it's so true too. Because like, how many parts of our would someone say? Still got to clean the white stuff inside. Yep, it's true. True. I'm just like peeling it off. It's coming off really easily. It's very easy. Yeah, that's actually it. We got most of the seeds on them. Yeah, so they weren't even like. And this pepper just doesn't have much like white stuff anyway. Because I think, because it's very like well grown. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like sometimes our food is like less flavorful and less the way it's supposed to be when it's so processed. And right. Like when it's not grown well or like organically or, or sustainably, not necessarily organically, but local and, and in, a, in a way that's infused with love and positive energy. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. And I was also going to say too, I've been reading this book. Have you ever read this? It's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. 
I have been hearing about it every, me too, and that's why I started reading it. Um, and it's interesting because the one thing that she says, it's by Marie Kondo. It's a really good book. I have it on audio, on Audible. Um, oh, are you and Audible? I am an Audible person. And so, um, cause I like to do that when I walk in the morning, yeah, like yeah, I like to get my little dose of like inspiration and knowledge after my quiet time to myself with my ritual in the morning. So I, it's really nice, but um, anyway, so she says in the book, there's this part where she talks about how she got into this habit. She's a professional organizer and she like tidies up and all this stuff. So um, she teaches this method for tidying up. Um, oops. And uh, so anyway, so she was talking about how at one point in her like personal journey to finding this method that she um, would start cleaning and throwing away her family members' old stuff that, that they didn't use. And it was so interesting because it was like what she learned from it was that usually when we do that, when, and it's so true, like that judgment thing about other people is just a reflection of, of ourselves and things that we're judging within ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's so true in this case too because like she was like, when I went back to my room, I had a ton of stuff I could have been cleaning up. I could have been doing, you know, all of – this work on myself and I just wasn't I was focused on doing it on other people and I wonder what happens like I just my the client I talked to before this we were talking about how that was the case and it's the case for all of us so mm -hmm. she's, it's not unique to her or to you or to me but you know if we were to give that energy to our own stuff and taking care of our own stuff we'd be in such a better position and feel so much more clear within ourselves and not feel like we need to scatter our energy all over and take care of everybody else's stuff. Because if we just do it ourselves, it's more than enough because it influences other people to do the same because they want to feel really good. And when we raise our energy, other people match it. Um, that was a really cool concept I yeah. to share. It was so How far into it are you? I, I don't remember. I listened to it one day while I was cleaning. Mm -hmm. Just to, like I was like, kind of like working myself through these different areas. So I cleaned out my whole closet and took a bunch of stuff to Goodwill and uh, just spray. Um, so I don't, I don't really know. I think I might be, I'm a couple chapters in, not the full way done by any means, but you're excited. Yeah, it's good. So it's really nice. I like those like um, lessons that we can really apply to anything in our lives or our whole lives yeah. in general, like our lives in, as a whole. So. So I have a question for you. Yes. And it has to do with what you just kind of mentioned, which is morning <laughs> routines. Yes. Which I am oh. fascinated to hear people's morning routines. Uh -huh. um, so what does like a typical morning look like for you? Well, on the norm. Yeah. So I just got back from a retreat in Connecticut for a week with my sisterhood mastermind and, and a bunch of other coaches who I love. Mm -hmm. And so ever since that time, I've been feeling super inspired and super soulful and just awesome. So I really have started a new morning ritual where I really, I'm feeling so much aligned with it. Like I um, put a post up on Instagram this morning about this, actually the same topic and the saying how it's interesting because like I was always kind of that person who was like, I don't have time for that. Like yeah. whatever. Um, like probably like six months ago, even I would have said that or like was really thinking it. I didn't want to say it, but I was thinking it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was always kind of that person who was like, how can you do something every day, the same thing and be excited about it? Like that just doesn't make any sense. So I actually, it's funny now because mm -hmm. I've really found something that I enjoy doing, which is every morning I wake up, I created this really awesome playlist on Spotify that I love, and I have one for a moving meditation and one for a stillness meditation. And um, so I will wake up, like roll out of bed, light my candles. I have like two separate altars in my room. And so I'll light candles on both. And then I have a meditation station that I've created for myself where I have like this little altar on a table. And I will sit there, I'll turn on the playlist, sit down and kind of just like be for a moment and breathe and then it's like do some like stillness meditation then i write three morning pages meaning like three just mind dump pages in my journal 
full pages. And then I will pull two goddess cards. One, I ask, what do I need to learn? To, what do I need to focus on today for myself? What do I need to know? And then the second one is, what do I need to share with other people? And how can I be of service? Yeah. And then, so I pull two and put them on my altar. And I have this little Buddha thing that, like, holds them perfectly, which is super cool. And um, then I have, like, this thing on it with my crystals. And, like, it's very cool. And I'll probably post some pictures of it on Instagram if I haven't already. Um, but just like cool little things that I love that are meaningful to me and are kind of like remind me of the magic. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I just so like doing do it for that. A few months. Yeah. And then once I like sit there and meditate, write my journal, page, like write my pages in my journal, pull goddess cards. I also right now have been doing this energetic thing with calling in clients for my freedom of sexy program that's coming up. So I pulled one goddess card for each of them and, and kind of felt into what, their journey would be or what the theme of their, our time together would be, yeah. which is really fun and cool and just a different way for me to, you know, call in clients and it's really fun That's really, really cool. and meaningful to me. So I really know now like the energy of who's coming in. Mm -hmm. And I also had bought them like little bracelets that I got when I was on vacation and I picked up one for each of the women I saw be in the program and thought about like, what color would they want and why it was, you know, like really felt into the energy of what they would be coming with. Um, so I did, I do that now too. I kind of like send energy to each of them and, and bring them into my mind and think about like, who is this woman? What is her journey looking like? Where is she feeling stuck? How, how can I be of service to her? What will our time together look like? What will she bring into the sisterhood? Yeah. Um, what will be her contribution? Um, so I do that in the morning too. And then when I feel like it, I get up and start just like moving my body in a real like fun way. Um, yeah, do like a little moving meditation. This is perfect. I mean, so that's, yeah, I kind of feel like I, I do it. all of it. And then sometimes I do like, I'll like this morning, I had a lot of spaciousness in the morning. I didn't have anything really scheduled until a little later. Mm -hmm. um, I had a massage scheduled for like 10. Yeah. And then, so before that time, I woke up super early. I was like, really excited to be awake today. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I was really excited about you this. And you're like, I woke up. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, purpose fulfilled. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I woke up this morning super early and did all of that and was like, huh ate breakfast and then I went for a walk along the river here in Pittsburgh which I love doing and that was a nice little like moving meditation for me and I've been listening to um these audios from people who are walking the priestess path it's called priestess Ooh. presence this thing I'm really really into it's like goddess archetype study which is something I've been working with for the past nine months and it's really something I want to bring into my work more on what I'm going to be bringing into freedom and sexy and, and just my own life of like this goddess lifestyle, what that really looks like to be an embodied modern day goddess. Um, and by the way, this is all part of it <laughs> today. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's what I do. And I was walking this morning. It's so funny. And I saw like, I usually walk on the same trail mm -hmm. and it's like a paved trail. So there's like sidewalk chalk and stuff. So like you can use it there. Mm -hmm. And I, um, was I know and so I like literally stopped and it said on the ground in front of me it was so crazy I was like how is this happening it said are you having fun yet question mark I was like <laughs> oh my god get out of here that's amazing so I said like are you having fun yet like right on my literal path that I've been yeah. walking it's so funny and I was like actually yes I am thank you very much <laughs> that's awesome what do you do for your morning ritual um so my morning ritual was, yeah, so before I talk about that, let's go ahead and warm up these noodles. Okay. So what we're going to do with the noodles, it's really, really simple. I just cut off a chunk of butter, and I know this looks like a lot of butter. <laughs> I swear it is not. Um, butter gets a really bad rep. I know. If you get, yeah, and it's good, we... If you take anything away from the nutrition part of this, start eating better quality fats and get fats into your diet because fats help your entire body work better. It helps absorb things faster. It helps your digestive move quicker. And it really it works with the foods that you eat. And it's huge. Fat is so good and so I huge. I, I want to tell my story about the fat day of homegrown too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, but we're going to go ahead and put okay. those in that. I think we're going to lose here for a minute. I can. 
Hey guys, up close. <laughs> I'm really, that shot. might have been stupid to do, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so okay, let's put this down. Are you turning it to medium? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on like medium to low because these are very, I mean, this is. Yeah, go ahead and pop that baby in there. Yeah, your noodles, I mean, like she said, they're pretty delicate, so you don't need a high, super high heat. You can also use, if you don't eat butter, you can use coconut oil. It's really good under high heat, which, you know, we're not using right now, but. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, well, I guess that's the stage we're at right now. We're gonna, mm -hmm. It's just going to take a few minutes. We're literally just going to warm them, but it's going to be, this dish is, it can be cold or hot, but I thought since it's turning fall, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to use stereotypical fall squashes, like uh, <laughs> Butternuts and acorn squash and how is it? There's a kabuka. I think it's both. Is it kabuka? I think that's kabuka. how you say it. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> but those heirloom um, squash. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of thought zucchini is always overlooked, and it's really I love it. Zucchini is actually it's versatile. Yeah, and it's an anti-oxidant um, filled vegetable, mm -hmm. so it's going to help build up your immune system and things like that. But yeah, I always use it. You know, I love zucchini in eggs, like in scrambled eggs mm -hmm. with basil. Oh, like yeah. everything that we're using today, actually, I would normally just throw in some eggs and like make it a breakfast. I eat like, so many eggs. Brunch. <laughs> I I don't think do vegetarians eat eggs? Does anyone know? I don't. I don't know the answer to it. Than they do, but if not, or I think most of them do because usually they would be like, "Oh, I'm a vegetarian because I eat." eggs and some dairy mm -hmm. as opposed to being but yeah yeah <laughs> well y'all know what i mean i eat so many eggs it's not even should i toss these puppies in i don't wait maybe just okay. one more minute or two okay. but oh maybe though maybe i'm wrong so for the so in tara's yeah. program homegrown which i've done and it's freaking amazing um i there was this fat day that she had in, as part of the <laughs> and I like love it first of all because it was on a Tuesday so it was like technically fat Tuesday <laughs> awesome. it? it was good. and I was traveling that day so I was like all right cool like I get to have a fat day while I'm traveling I was driving to my retreat and um <laughs> it was so funny like I was at Whole Foods and I'm like Tara what should I get <laughs> from Whole Foods to make like this to, to fulfill these fat requirements and like have something really awesome and healthy that's portable. And I was like, okay, what do we get? She's like, grab an avocado, go to the salad bar at Whole Foods, fill it up with like all this stuff. I'm like, you're genius. And I ended up getting like, I found pico de gallo and guac mix. So I got that and like, um, some like awesome like tortilla chips that were super yummy and healthy. And then I got, um, Two peaches and Brazil nuts and like oh my god Brazil oh, nuts oh my god it's so good they're like the brain nut yeah, yeah. Brain, brain nut Ooh. yeah oh you can't see because I yeah know it's our peeps we're, we're not really what, what we can in, in here and that's it we were so um, graciously allowed to use this space by my <laughs> best friend who. Yeah, I guess her room didn't really have a choice, but she, <laughs> but her apartment is gorgeous and mine's a dungeon, so. <laughs> her light in here and All right. spaciousness. Yeah, so we're just going to lightly season this with um, some Himalayan sea salt, which has a lot more nutrients left in it than regular salt, so you might want to try to find this somewhere. Is that? Oops, I meant, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we're just gonna. I love sea salt. It's so true too. Like I hate eating food that's not properly seasoned. That's probably my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's I'm so like, cool. Just season it properly. Like make the flavors come alive. Like you can you know, get to people uh, are like afraid of salt and like you can yeah and spices and herbs and stuff and that's like the best. People are actually sodium is something that a lot of people are. Kind of like <laughs> deficient in good yeah. sodium, um, which also it just helps. Uh, it, it, again, has a bad rep. Mm -hmm. Table salt, not the best, but when you get a really good quality salt, it's gonna kind of change change your life. But um, change your life. 
like Iggy Azalea. Have you heard she that song? song? No, it's like an old song, but it's like, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change your life. I miss her. I like that song. <laughs> um, how long do we, like, I would say a little, maybe a couple more minutes. They're still a little bit stiff. They, yeah. How so, do we know when they're done? You can't, I, it's a, you can keep them on there as long as you want. If you keep them on too long, they're going to get a little bit so, mushy. Yeah. So, these, the ones that you cut specifically, whenever they get just a little bit more transparent, transparent and a little bit softer, but not like super, super soft. I mean, we're approaching. You just want to warm them up really to make this really beautiful dish. I'm excited to make this again. It's, it's just so really easy. easy. I mean, we've been talking, so we kind of. <laughs> um, especially if you prepare it ahead of time. Yeah, which is great. This will. If you are doing this for just one person, this is plenty for a couple meals, maybe even three. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty good. What time is it? Eight. Okay, so that'll wrap it up by eight fifty. Um, well, okay, that's a good segue. I do have. Do you? So you the sign up ends on Friday for Freedom is Sexy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And there are still spots available? There are. There are only okay. a few, though, and they're first come, first serve. So if you are interested in being part of the sisterhood and the one-on-one -on -one coaching deep dive mm -hmm. into really becoming the leader, the visionary leader that you desire to be to create an impact in the world, then email me ASAP. Yeah. Yes. The, there are only a couple spots left, and the ones that are left will be first come, first serve. And it's super important to me, too, that, like, what I'm talking about energy this whole time um, is, like, the energy of who is part of this group. And so it's really important to me to talk to everyone who's going to be in it on the phone and connect with you personally so that we know it's a good fit, number one. Number two, so I can really feel into the energy that you're bringing in and what your impact is going to be and what your contribution will be to the group at large. And also... Just to just to feel into like to get to know you because I want it to be it's intimate. It's only seven women total plus me, so eight of us will be on this journey together for eight weeks. How appropriate! Um, by the way, I didn't realize that until just now. Um, so it's really important to me that we have a really safe space where everybody feels comfortable and like we really drive and, and we're in community together in a really deep, beautiful way. So I really want everybody to connect with me personally first so that we can make sure that it's a good fit for you and answer any questions you might have. So if you are interested in that, please send me an email at ecastle, E-C-A-S-S-E-L dot, like a period, life coach, L I F. E C O A C H at gmail.com and we can set up a time this week before Friday to get on the phone and talk for 30 minutes and just kind of answer any questions you might have. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's so also, excited. It's gonna be that's awesome. another perfect segue though, because yeah. so first anybody that signs up for Freedom is Sexy oh, yeah, yeah. within the next what 24 hours? Mm -hmm. Maybe 24 hours. Okay. Yep. For the next 24 hours, you are just going to get a bonus of my program, The Homegrown, that starts October 26th, which I thought is actually perfect because yeah, it will be right in the middle of Freedom and Sex is mm -hmm. Sexy, yeah. and it will be right, hopefully, when people are starting to have that change, mm -hmm. where, you know, right. things are getting really exciting, and they want to just, you know, switch a few mm -hmm. different things in their life. I'm yeah. really excited about because it. Because a lot of times what happens with my clients is that they want, you know, I'm able to do, I'm able to help them create those external shifts too in their health and wellness. But Tara is like the expert on that. And she can take you much deeper and give you all of this great information and resources and things in depth in a way that I honestly don't really have the space for um, in my program. So it's such a good way to really integrate that full lifestyle of healthy living and really healthy being of you know, your soul and all those good things and really creating your impact and all the things we've talked about today really um, on this call is what's going to happen for you. And, and you're going to get to the point where you, you are changing those perspectives about what failure and success look like and um, all that good stuff. And yeah, just, I just the more I think, think about it's it, it's going to be a huge trend, hugely transformational. And that's why I really love, you know, you said something earlier about like, cookie cutter 
Yeah, um, the zucchini she was talking about, right? And <laughs> that's really, it's funny because that's how I feel about my programs, right? Like I want, it's my personal belief and my personal experience that what really works to create those huge transformations is one-on-one -on -one coaching and a sisterhood community format where we can really come together and do deep work and be in community together and support one another and reflect back to one another and, and feel into our triggers and what's difficult for us and all those things. And there's so much beautiful growth that happens in those two spaces. And it's not cookie cutter. It's not going to be like me sending out, Oh, do this in your life and it'll be perfect. Like that's not what it's about for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why like I sometimes have issues with some bigger coaching programs, to be honest, because they are very impersonal. And I, my, the reason I love my work and the service that I'm providing is because it is so intimate and personal and deeply connected. And there's that connection that we're missing right. in our day-to-day -day lives in today's world. Yeah. Um, where we don't really have the sacred space to go deeper and to, um, what was that? Tone deaf. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, you know, we we don't have the, the space and we don't have the people to ask us those questions that are deeper in our society today. And it's so necessary that we create that sacred space for ourselves to really honor ourselves and our own personal journey and our own beautiful creation of this life that, that we're living um, so that's kind of why the format is what it is. And I just put out a really awesome, well, I think it's awesome <laughs> video today about like my philosophy and what I believe in, in the program and all that jazz. So check out my, um, well, it's, I sent it out on my newsletter, but it's on YouTube as well. So check out my YouTube channel. Sign up for the yeah. newsletter because yes. it's awesome. <laughs> Every week I send you some beautiful things. So we're both running out of batteries, so <laughs> but this is what we have. This is what we're dealing with right now. Not dealing with, but so it tur it's turning out such, it's so beautiful. And it, if you can see this, it, it really does look like noodles. Look, it's like, you know, flimsy, just like a noodle, but you're saving yourself so much gut pain. Yeah. <laughs> so at the very end there, we just threw in our red peppers. I threw in a little bit of garlic, which you could have sauteed in with the zucchini, but I forgot. <laughs> so, um, okay. We'll just sprinkle it raw. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to just put the tomatoes in. I guess I should be doing this right here. Hold on. Let's turn this back. So we move it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So yeah, now we're just going to add our tomatoes on top. We've got a pretty good system. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty it's impressive. Cool. Sorry, I'm going to use this for a lot of, a lot of videos. So I'm going to give Emily some basil, and she's just going to tear it up. Just get it in with your gloves. This is another really, it makes it really <laughs> intense. <laughs> We're oh, just putting it in the Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So, and then we're just going to end up taking this basil and kind of sprinkling. <laughs> sprinkling. <laughs> sprinkling. We clearly have been talking too long. Oh, my God, it smells so good. Mm, I love basil. And I love basil with tomatoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so good about it. I like that. <laughs> my right. song? You like? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. One of my favorite Glad. parts about doing this with you. <laughs> okay. The musical introduction. So, yeah, she's going to give that a little stir. Did we put the gar garlic in? Or did you? I sprinkled some garlic okay. in. Cool. I didn't use the whole thing because I'm not sure. <laughs> It's oh just seasoned to taste. So now we're going to take some olive oil and literally just, yeah, while she's plopping that stuff around, <laughs> I'm just going to drizzle a little tiny bit. Gorgeous. This looks so good. I can't wait to eat this. Oh, I'm still on. I know. We still have more to add in because it's just that good. Thank God. Oh. So I'm going to, yeah. Look at what we've created together. And it only took us an hour and a half. Magic. Okay, wait, let's make sure. Did we use it? I think we did. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We did. We did really good. Except, okay, now we're gonna. Uh, the finishing touches is feta, or you know, goat cheese is a little bit easier to digest than cow's milk cheese, but I like feta. So, Emily, why don't you spoon us out some here in okay. these bowls that we just used? Beautiful for these. We'll do. Will do, my. I'm, I don't you know why that just came out of me, but hey, why not? Do you ever 
use lemons like when do you for seasoning for everything. I like guess yeah. I'm new to this. I, yes. The last couple months, I just started spritzing it and everything, and it really like changes the taste, but in so such a good way. Range. It just yeah. adds a little bit of citrus, and I it's love just it. The perfect way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take this little piece of lemon and just. I feel like I missed all the. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks for not holding a grudge because I know if you did, it would just be an internal reflection. Exactly. <laughs> See what I did there, you guys? If you've been watching this whole time. So funny. That's looking beautiful. Oh. Okay, and then, yeah, we're going to take the feta and just sprinkle it over the top of those babies. You can get better feta than this. <laughs> I was in uh, the last you know, pinch. Thank you for all the hearts and love. That is so kind and sweet. I love it. Okay. You can kind of, do you like feta? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Load her up. I love it. <laughs> so we're, it's so good. This is like some nice big chunky feta too. I cannot wait to eat it. We're going to show you too. Yeah. This is really easy. And one of the things I love about um, cooking and, and what I love to do okay. to have like a healthy lifestyle is to prepare all my meals ahead of time um, yeah. for the week as much as possible. And that's like the coolest thing because this could easily be done. I mean, if we didn't have to prep everything, it would be like two minutes. You know, okay. to just like heat up the noodles and assemble. Yeah. And specifically, I don't, this, again, we talked a little bit, so it probably isn't that much to no. prep. But also, this is such an easy dish to add whatever protein source that you want to it. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken would complement this dish really well, I think. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> cool. Check it out. Hold on. Can you see that? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> the <trifecta. laughs> All right, guys, the taste test. What if our faces got, like, real bad? And My cheeks are, like, going. Mmm. It's so fresh. I love it. Mm hmm It's so nice. I mean, I wish you could all be eating this with us right now. The basil on that is kind of, I don't know if you thought about it yet, but... Mmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. And the lemon. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm okay. not a confession. I've never made this dish before. <laughs> but I have done. Good. I have done zucchini noodles, but this is so incredible. Good. And it was so simple. And that's another thing about cooking and food mm -hmm. and nutrition is that it doesn't have to be hard, and you don't have to be a culinary expert mm -hmm. to start making some better, simple -er, <laughs> uh, choices for yeah. your body. And, and that life doesn't have to be so damn hard either. <laughs> and so it's like, it can be easy and simple. I just, I mean, we can all figure that out. And I think the way we do that is through mentorship and coaching and sisterhood and learning about ourselves and really being able to go deep mm -hmm. and being willing to go there. So yeah, and we focus a lot in Homegrown, which is, Homegrown is four weeks of a guided holistic nutrition counseling and body movement and exploration and lifestyle adjustments. So it's three weeks of guided food and movement from me, and then we cut the ties a little bit for one week, but you still have the support from me, so if you need it, if you need me. I'm right there. We have a, a, a great little tribe group that we connect with on Facebook. So great. I love it. Community is so huge. And I think that's one thing about Freedom is Sexy, too, that I really like. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so if you sign up again for Freedom is Sexy, then you get homegrown midway through, and you're going to have the life and the body of your dreams. <laughs> now we're an infomercial. Mm -hmm. It sounds corny, but like, how else do you say it? I don't know. It's like people sit and like think about it, <laughs> they a like, dream, and then it happens, and then it's, it comes true. Like, I don't get how to say it. But. I've always dreamed of. That's true, though. You really will. <laughs> We're living proof, clearly. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. And 
love what we do and are so passionate about it and mm -hmm. love living in service of you lovely people and just amazing. Like, I, I wake up every day and I'm like, whoa, I'm ready to pop out of bed. You know, and that's what I want for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's really like, the, that's the motivation for my vision and for my business is really to like bring that feeling to as many women as I can and yeah. to really help them connect with their why and their purpose and like simplify it. Because if we get out of our heads and into our souls, everything is so easy and simple and effortless and it just flows. And there's no reason that we need to live up here all the time. Yeah. It's kind because of already it's not there. service. So why do it? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's that. <laughs> yeah. I guess on that note, is that an ending note? That's or? an ending note. Unless you have anything else to say. Her program is amazing, by the way. Home so home I did it. Um, I did the first round with her, and it was absolutely amazing. I was also, like, traveling during the process, and I still, really cool. I still made time for it because she made it so simple and so easy and so accessible, and it was so fun for me, and it was so nice to have that community, too, of people who are going through it and, like, on a sugar detox and like, what sucks? Yeah, yeah, we're cutting um, sugar, so all but the it actually, sugar lovers. You know what, I actually want to say something about that, because I, uh, I have like a huge sweet tooth normally, and I, I'm saying this because it's actually true, I'm not just saying it to, to promote this program at all. Mm -hmm. I did this program and cut out sugar, and I haven't craved it since. Like, I, I mean, I've craved it a little bit here and there, but not like a, not an astronomical amount that it's like a problem. Just like little treats here and there are fine, but like I don't have the same um, craving that I used to have. Yeah. It's so cool. I'm like, like so grateful to you for that because it's like such a profound shift that I never expected to actually yeah. happen for me because I'm like very a sweets person. Mm -hmm. So. I had a very, well, I had a similar, I stopped craving kind of, um, I stopped craving, uh, I guess, like, you know, textbook sugar, like, mm -hmm. like Snickers bar. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so weird because my body, after I kind of had shifted, and it took time, it does take mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But my body then started craving fats. I, mm -hmm. I wanted really good fats. Like, I, I crave bacon <laughs> or, um you know, mm -hmm. butter, like uh, savory things, um, a little bit of saltier things, but you, you can start tuning in and listening to what your body wants as opposed to, you know, just going to things that you see, uh, the mm -hmm. easy decisions, yeah. and then you can really just tune in. attention mm -hmm. behind it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's really exciting, and I think we're, hey, I think we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to share all of this with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for those of you who have tuned in and have stayed the whole time. It's so amazing. Yeah, thank you. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. <laughs> Mwah. We love you. Thank Bye you for being guys. here. <laughs> My friend died. We'll talk to you Ten soon. Ago. Be sure to email me if you are interested, by the way. And... You can find me <laughs> on my website and find my email address there. It's emilycastle.com. And I think oh, that's okay. in my profile here on Are Periscope. You're your camera as like a tooth cleaner. Mm, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Or Facebook. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Have a beautiful night. I hope you make this recipe soon because it's delicious. Mwah. Talk to you all soon. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye now. Oh, your, cheers. Your sister. Oh. Um, I don't see a person, but I see that I muted Oh, yeah. She might have muted herself now because I can't unmute her. But you can. Beautiful. Thanks, Kate. Alrighty. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here.